What's going on guys, this is Rob, and I am getting ready to go see Doctor Strange 2 in like three hours. So yes, this video is going up, but I'm ignoring everything. I'm not responding to any comments. I'm not reading any comments. I'm not getting on social media, nothing. Like this is one movie where I don't want anything spoiled for me. However, for reasons that I'll never fully understand, one of you guys asked me to make a video explaining the incursions, but as you guys know, I love Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, and I will take any opportunity to talk about it. So let's talk about the incursions. <laughs> I love, oh my God. I love the incursions. God, I love Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers. God, it's so good. For those of you guys who never who, who, who were never part of like our original coverage, one, you are missing out. Like, dude, it was one of the best things to like watch fans like in the comments as we were covering it. They're like, it's the greatest story ever. Uh, and two, you'll find the whole playlist down in the description. So here's the thing about the incursions. What I'm about to tell you happens in the first three issues. It's nuts. One day, Black Panther's hanging out. <laughs> and basically, like, I think it's a rhinoceros just comes running through what looks like an invisible wall. And Black Panther's like, what in the hell is going on with that? So he goes to investigate. And when he passes through, he basically sees a red earth. And so he's like, okay, this is really weird. But then there's also this chick named Black Swan who shows up. She kind of like descends down from this earth. And then basically Black Panther fights them all, ends up capturing her. And then he reforms the Illuminati in what's like one of the best Black Panther moments ever. Okay, so it's so good. It's so amazing that like at the, at the end of this, there's this moment where Black Panther, he's praying to the Panther goddess Bast, right? And he's like, goddess, oh goddess, save me from what this world demands. What is it? He's like, save me from righteous men, save me from thinkers, save me from summoners, like save me from midnight kings and the devil himself. He's talking about like Namor the Submariner because like the last time they met, Namor the Submariner had basically like attacked Wakanda during the events of Avengers versus X-Men and like pretty much obliterated Wakanda. So like Black Panther has like a blood feud with uh, with with like Namor the Submariner now, but nonetheless, right? So, so basically Black Panther reforms the Illuminati, which includes Captain America, right? We're not gonna cover the entirety of Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, by the way, just talk about the incursions here. But you guys can't, yeah, you, you understand, man. I can't help myself. The story's just that damn good. Once the Illuminati's reformed, Reed Richards basically interrogates Black Swan. And that's when you get what they initially believe to be the cause of the incursions. Like literally Black Swan, you end up finding out she has no clue what the hell's going on. But she spouts her, her views with such conviction that like you think she knows what's actually happening. But she basically talks about Raboo Malal and like the, the great destroyer and like the, the wheel has to turn. And like basically the idea behind the incursions is that somewhere along the line, an entire universe was obliterated, right? That earth was, was basically destroyed and the universe was annihilated along with it. And when that happened, it basically pushed the two universes next to it into the universes next to them, creating what was basically a domino effect. Now, earth is the anchor point. So when an incursion happened, like it did at the beginning of the story, and you basically saw an alternate earth out there just kind of floating in the ether, what happens is that from the time that earth appears, you basically have eight hours. By the time that eight hours reaches zero, those earths will collide and both universes will be destroyed. However, the only way to stave off an incursion is to destroy one of those Earths. Now, when that whole realization happens, again, we're still sticking with like the first three issues of Jonathan Hickman's New Avengers run. This is how epic it was. So what ends up going on here <laughs> is that essentially the Illuminati are like, well, there's only one thing we can do. So they gather the Infinity Stones, right? All the Infinity Gems and they assemble the Infinity Gauntlet. And when they're trying to figure out who it is to wield it, they ultimately decide Captain America should be the one to use the Infinity Stones. Stones. And so he grabs the gauntlet and he like pushes the alternate earth away. But in the process, all the infinity stones are destroyed except for the time stone, which disappears. So basically when the infinity gauntlet fails as a, as a resort, the Illuminati are just like, we got to start blowing up worlds. But Captain America doesn't want to. Captain America's like, no, I'm not okay with that. And so under the direction of Iron Man, Doctor Strange wipes the mind of Captain America and throws him out of the Illuminati. So he has no idea what they're doing. Later on during Original Sin, he remembers. And by this point, he's just this crotchety old son of a bitch who lost his healing factor or lost his super soldier serum. So he's like hunting the Illuminati with like the full might of shield. It's amazing. But nonetheless, following that, basically it's just Earth smashing into each other and like Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four makes a multiversal bridge so they can look into other realities and see how other realities are handling the incursions and things along those lines. Doctor Strange tries to sell his soul at the sinner's market and he can't because he has like a corrupted soul, an incomplete soul. So he can't have basically the power Power of God, he only gets like like most of it, right? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know what most of God's power is. Like, what's most of infinity? I, I don't know, like 900 billion? I have no idea. So at the end of the story, what you end up learning is it was actually Dr. Doom who basically caused the incursions to happen, but it was unintentional. It was an accidental thing. You had a group of beings out there from the Beyondverse that were referred to 
As the Beyonders, nobody ever said Marvel was great when it came to names. But the important thing here is that these guys had been around for quite some time, but they had just now basically constructed their experiment. That what you have across, in, in, in really in every single universe in Marvel Comics, is you have the Molecule Man Owen Reese. This guy's a universal constant. In every single universe, his origin is the exact same. And in every single universe, his power set is the exact same. The ability to alter reality on a universal scale. The reason why this was done is because the Beyonders had basically engineered the Molecule Man to be that way, and they were the reason why he existed. And the whole intention of the Beyonders was to basically detonate all the Molecule Men across the multiverse at the same time and blow up the multiverse. That was their goal. And so when Doctor Doom had realized this, he worked alongside the Molecule Man Owen Reese. They went to an alternate reality and they killed one of the Molecule Men. But when that happened, it was detonating a bomb. The power of the Molecule Man in that reality blew up the entire universe. And that's what started the incursions in the first place. And so that's why when it comes to Jonathan Hickman's Avengers and New Avengers, over the course of the story, it's literally a race against time. It's basically Doctor Doom trying to kill as many Molecule Men as possible in order to ensure that because the Beyond can't be defeated, right? No one in the in the multiverse has that level of power. Not even the Living Tribunal. Like they literally killed it. The Beyonders killed the Living Tribunal. Oh, it was a, it was amazing, dude. There's this point in the story when like you find out that Reed Richards has sent Hank Pym, Ant Man, into the multiverse. Hank Pym comes back and he's like, "We are so screwed." And they're like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Okay, so like I got out into the multiverse and and literally once I found like a true north, I was able to basically make my way through the through the multiverse with some level of direction. I ended up coming across." Across what was basically a massacre. The, like all the cosmic entities were just being annihilated by the Beyonders. And I wouldn't even call it like an annihilation, man. That, that indicates they stood a chance. Whatever word you would use to indicate that these beings are being destroyed by the Beyonders and they never had a chance to even live, that's what was happening to them, right? Whatever that adjective is, right? To describe just this absolute massacre that's happening. So after all these cosmic entities are destroyed, the living tribunal shows up, right? Basically the second most powerful being before God. Hank Pym is watching all this unfold. The Beyonders kill the living tribunal. They obliterate that guy, right? So like, that's the level of power we're talking about, right? These, these dudes were nuts. So, when, so because of the fact that Dr. Doom couldn't defeat them, that what Dr. Doom was continuing to do was go through the multiverse and basically kill as many Molecule Men as he possibly could as a race against what was going on. The other thing that he did is he formed the Black Swans so they could start destroying incursive of Earth to try to slow down the incursions. So it's kind of fighting a war on two fronts. Again, all this comes to a head at the end of the story. Oh my God, at the end of New uh, Avengers and New Avengers, when basically like, like Dr. Doom and those guys confront the Beyonders and it's like this giant container full of molecule men, like literally just these ridiculously powerful guys. They open it up on it, right? It's like Dr. Doom, it's Molecule Man Prime, you can call him that, and Dr. Strange. And like, they're literally facing these Beyonders and they open up this container of molecule men who go flooding into the Beyonders and, and destroy them all. And so with all that power out there, Dr. Doom absorbs the power of the Beyonders and becomes God King Doom. Oh my God, it was so good. It was just so ridiculously good. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying, man. It's one of the greatest stories ever. But that's basically the incursions. Right? The incursions of Marvel Comics were a set of events which was created by Dr. Doom in an effort to stave off the Beyonders' attempt to destroy the multiverse and he accidentally caused universes to start crashing into each other. And that was basically it. Like, once that first universe was destroyed, there was no way to stop the incursions. It was inevitable the multiverse was going to collapse. But with that being said, guys, uh, we're going to bring this to an end. I hope you appreciate this, this explanation on the incursions. I am off social media until I'm done seeing Doctor Strange. I'm not answering tweets. I'm not talking to people. I'm not looking at comments. No nothing. And I will see you guys when I am done. Peace. <laughs>